Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is the uh, second part of the 18D notes on chi-squared test of independence. All right, so on the last one, we kind of talked about um, how to do all the calculations by hand. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about more, uh, some more of the information that you're going to need, and then we're going to be able to actually do some of this on our um, graphing calculator, make our life easy. Okay, so first thing, or I should say next thing, uh, degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Okay, so the degrees of freedom of four rows of data by eight columns of data is we would do four minus one times eight minus one, which gives us three times seven, which is 21. So our degrees of freedom on that would be 21. All right, and I'm sure you're all saying, what the heck does that mean? Uh, again, we're going to have to kind of put a whole bunch of things, throw a whole bunch of stuff at you, and then we'll put it all together here at the end. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's get rid of this calculation here first. Okay, I got gotcha. you. There we go. Okay, sorry. Back to this. So degrees of freedom, um, simply... Um, it helps us accurately choose our critical values determine to determine independence. Okay, so here's our degrees of freedom. This is just up to 10. There's actually the degrees of freedom goes much much higher. Um, it's basically as high as you need it to go to. But this is just the first 10 degrees of freedom. Um, and then the area right of the table value. So this is 10 percent. There's 10 percent, 5 percent, or 1 percent of the 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 area to the right, the area of rejection we call it. Okay, so this kind of explains this a little bit more. The values 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 10, 5, and 1 percent are called significance levels, and these are the ones which are most commonly used, and really the one that's the most commonly used is 0.05. So we'll be most likely be looking in this middle column here for the most part. Okay. Um, again, this probably isn't making much sense yet, but um, we we will get there. Okay, you will um, you will be given this table. You do not need to memorize anything on this table. Um, all right, so let's take a look. Let's put some of this into use. There is a formal test for independence. There's a bunch of things that you need to do, um, and there's six steps. The book actually has seven steps. I just took the last step out because we don't really need it. Um, just yet we'll we'll look at that a little bit later okay so formal test first thing we do is we state H O H sub O which is called the null hypothesis um, this is a statement that the two classifications being considered are independent so this is basically just our hypothesis okay and then we have H1 which is the alternative hypothesis in case the original hypothesis is not true Okay, so this is a statement that the two classifications being considered are not independent. Okay, second thing we need to do is calculate our DF, which is degrees of freedom. So that's the rows minus one times the columns minus one, which we did in the last video. We quote the significance level required. Um, and again, they will ask for one of these three significance levels. We state the rejection inequality, which is x squared. That's the chi squared calculated greater than k where k is obtained from the table of critical values okay and again we'll, we'll put this all together here in a little bit um, and then from the contingency table which is the table on that last that we just had here the chi squared calculated using this here using this formula and again instead of using this formula we're going to actually do the graphing calculator and then the last step is from the information that we get from that contingency table or from what we get on the graphing calculator we either accept or reject this null hypothesis um, depending on this inequality right here okay if you're thoroughly confused don't worry about it here's where we're gonna start to put it all together alright okay so um, oh let's see apparently I got a little bit more stuff oh wow I put too much back on there we go um, let's look down here. Oh, right. Here's where we are going to look back at the information that we used on the first 
um, on the on the first video that we did we were talking about um, regular exercise and gender if they're independent or not so the six steps that we did not that we could have done on that test are first step is the um, null hypothesis so that is it um, the null hypothesis is regular exercise and gender are independent okay so then the rejection of that or the alternative hypothesis would be regular exercise and gender are not independent so that's the first step step two calculate our degrees of freedom so there were two rows by two columns so two rows two columns subtract one from each that's one times one gives us one so our degrees of freedom is one okay um, it says right in oh let it doesn't say anywhere we're just gonna say let's just say our significance level is five percent okay so now our step four is we reject our null hypothesis if our x our chi-squared calculation is greater than 3.84 and right now you're probably wondering where in the world 3.84 comes from so remember this our degrees of freedom is one and our significance level is five so I'm just gonna erase this here for a second and pull this back up here degrees of freedom is one the significance level is 0.5 there's our 3.84 so that's the number that we're we're looking for okay so getting rid of that and putting this back up so that's where that 3.84 comes in so when we go through and calculate the chi-squared value um, we're gonna say that H O our original hypothesis is not true so we reject our original hypothesis if our calculation our chi-squared calculation comes up to be greater than 3.84 okay so um, step 5 is to actually calculate our chi-squared and when we go through and do this on the graphing calculator which I haven't shown you yet um, but I will on the next video because I don't want to make this one too long but when you go through and, and calculate the chi-squared but we actually did it by hand in theory in the last video also but the chi-squared value was 0 0.00413 which so if you put the 0 0.00413 in here so let's just say we have 0 0.00413 and we have the greater than 3.84 that is not true right this is not bigger than that so it says we reject our null hypothesis if this is true since that's not true then we don't reject it which means we keep our original hypothesis okay so since our x our chi squared calculated is less than 3.84 we accept our um, our null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis so in other words that means that regular exercise and gender are independent classifications meaning that regular exercise and gender um, it, they are not related so it doesn't matter um, what gender you are as to whether or not you exercise regularly okay all right so um, I'm gonna stop it here and we'll do one last uh, video where we're gonna go we're gonna go through a problem together um, and calculate all of this and I'm gonna show you how to do it all on the um, graphing calculator also all right okay